Samsung. We really haven't been in the education market from an IWB perspective. Our first product was what we call the Flip One or Flip, and basically it was designed to go after corporate environments to think of a huddle room, you know, traditional flip cards that you write on it. Well, we digitized that. So fast forward to where we are today, uh, Samsung understands that we're lacking in the education market and that we really needed to come out with a, you know, a very powerful product. And the Samsung always, when we don't, we're not, you know, a majority in the market, we really throw a lot of resources at it. So this is our third generation product. We're developing it quick. Um, so as new feature sets and things come out, um, it's just basically a firmware update on this. And we actually look to you as teachers and educators for what we should put into this product because it is new. This is a new product. You know, you can have engineers in Korea who think this is great stuff, but realistically, we need to get feedback from you. So the, so the thing to think about is when you do make this investment, it's not something that you have to rip and replace when you as teachers or educators need additional stuff. It's just a matter of feeding that back to us. And we just do firmware updates to actually update that. So look at it. This is 75 inch. Um, oh, sorry. Here, 85. <laughs> 85 inch or W8 series. Um, just from a hardware perspective, Samsung is, you know, we're a large display manufacturer. Hopefully everybody has a Samsung display in your house. If not, talk to Michelle. And she'll get you a discount. But uh, yeah, so, <laughs> one of the things is we manufacture all our own components. So the glass is actually made by Samsung. We don't source it from a third party, so it's not coming from China. This is good because when we start to get into these, some of these supply constraints or unfortunate events happen around the world, you don't have to worry about us being able to deliver product because we keep, we, again, we develop everything in-house and we can always meet those needs. So that's just something.
something to keep in consideration. Because we do manufacture our own glass, we've done some things a little bit different. Um, we actually use the hardened glass. It's not Gorilla Glass, no baseball bats, anybody who tested in the classroom, but we have had students throw uh, phones at it and it actually, it, it did all right, it didn't break it. Because it is our own glass, we actually put that hardened coating in this. So think of it like your windshield. So if this does get shattered, um, it's not gonna go out and you know go to all your students, just like your windshield is gonna keep it in. We also put in an antimicrobial coating as well. Um, you know, after the, the pandemic, that sort of thing, especially if you have students that are coming up and uh, using this device. So as you can see, we run our own operating system. We took the approach of, we don't wanna compete, and I know some of our competitors here, we're not trying to compete with the ViewSonics or the new lines of the world. What we wanna do is replace this guy back here, right? Because teachers, if they don't have, if this isn't working, what are they gonna do? Push it out of the way and go back to what they knew. So that's what we did. We took a simplistic approach. So just right out of the box, as you can see, I could just walk up to it and get and tap on it. We we uh, originally booted just basically a digital whiteboard. So right off the back, as a teacher, and I'm not an art student, we're an engineer, so don't hold me on my right. But they can get out and start doing. So the math teacher today, they want to start doing problems. They can go ahead and write. As you can notice, the latency is very quick. So we have a 34 second call latency. We're using IR technology that we use, but because of the technology we use, you're not seeing that latency sometimes, so when I write, it's responsive. Again, if you get a teacher and they're writing, they have to wait two seconds, that's kind of annoying and becomes kind of a pain. And as far as erasing goes, it's just a matter of using the palm of your hand. Why did I erase it? That's a Why does that voice happen in the middle of the demo? It's because I just updated the firmware and they're still back in process. We didn't get in here time. That's what this is, so bear with me. That's embarrassing. <laughs> and it's always the first people, right? Yeah. Like, Max, if you saw it just in the background, going, oh man. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. You know, because I did a firmware update right before I got here, um, so that I can add some additional feature sets. One of them is being air aid of Nairplay, which I'll demo. And I see we have some MacBooks in here, so that's cool. Um, not sure what network we're connected to, but if we get on the net same network, I can demonstrate how easy it is. But yeah, so again, just basically out, as far as changing your color pod, just a matter of click on it. You can go through, select your different colors, uh, go to blue, and again, be able to make notations right away. Uh, right with your hand. The, this stylus is just a basic dongle, so there's no technology built into it. Um, so it's just recognized to the IR. So if these do get lost, it's not an expensive overhead to actually replace these. So that's kind of a, a nice point for that. And because of the thing I'm talking about, it'll actually recognize chopsticks. I actually had Dallas ISD that was worried about reusing stylus during this unfortunate pandemic. So they would give students chopsticks. Then each student would use their chopstick and then throw it in the day. So it really doesn't matter because of that type of technology. So basically right off the bat, um, we use the concept of sheets and rolls. So we look at each of these as a sheet. So for example, I can go ahead and make some notations on here with a smiling face. And I'm a teacher, it's just a matter of clicking here and then bringing it all over. And then I have another sheet that I can actually start making notations on. So again, really going taking a simplistic, right out of the box, digital whiteboard to be able to do a notation. Um, we do have some basic functionality on it. And the bottom is basically sort of our, our menu board of the different things that we can actually do. So for example, if I want to go ahead and select what I don't, you know, go back to what I wrote. I have that capability. I also have the capability to go forward. Um, we do have a roll browser, so this allows you to browse all those different sheets. So instead of going, they can actually just go there and uh, make notations, uh, go to the actual roll. There's some additional functionality. We also have the ability to, we have some basic math tools. So if it is a math class, we do have some ruler capability to where they can do this and measure different things that they're looking at. Um, the nice thing, again, these little tool sets, these are feature sets that will keep on coming out with firmware, um, you know, giving feedback from students, or from teachers. One of the biggest ones, timers. All the teachers want timers. And unfortunately, you don't have that, but yet in the next firmware release, which we're going to be bringing out, we're going to be introducing that. So again, it's not a big, thing, a big deal for Samsung to add these additional features and you don't have to replace the hardware. We also have the concept of what we know as forms. So this is a sheet or form. You can actually click on forms and I can go in and I can change the background. And everything you notice I'm doing is two or three clicks. I'm not having to click, 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 go into an application. So I'm not going to date me, but this is what I used to use when I was in school. So I can actually change it to the, uh, the green format and make notations as well. These are actually customizable too. So um, 
as a teacher, if I would say a health and science teacher, I want to bring up anatomy each time when I start my class, I could actually customize this form. So I could go in, go to forms, and with just a simple click, um, you can bring these down from two locations, whether it be up on a network drive, because for demo's sake, I'm just using a USB drive, and I could click add, click USB, and well, my folder structure, so yeah, that made myself think. And then I could go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and add this one each time. And it's on one time, so this will constantly be saved. So now I can go ahead and click on anatomy, click there. And now each time when my class comes up, this will automatically be here. Question. Are those backgrounds manageable at like a district or school level? So if all of our math teachers have the same kind of standard template, if you will, that we can force it out to all the math classrooms? Yes, through our RMS piece component of it, we are bringing that functionality in to be able to remotely manage and distribute things like this, including backgrounds. So all the math teachers could be started out with a grid, health and science teachers started out with this. Thanks. Okay. And so again, each time that I start it, that sheet will be started. And it is, since it is a digital whiteboard, does anybody know what this phone's called? Bueller? The funny Bueller? Yeah. <laughs> it's called the radius. Yeah, oh, there you go, yeah. Bueller's. I was called radius, but then, yeah, so. But yeah, again, it's nice because again, the teacher can get up running quick with this board and you know, not lose attention to your students because you, as you know, if you turn around for too long, students to, you know, kind of go off on their own world. So teacher wants to constantly be able to stay focused in that. And again, it's just a matter of erasing it or if I want to start over, I have that capability to do it as well. But we'll go ahead, we'll go down, start it over. Um, we do have some functionality built into it, it's simple. So uh, if I click here, we have the cut and paste functionality. Well, let me back up on here. Uh, so if I'm a teacher, we, this is, I don't know, let's pick a subject, sharks. Today class, we're going to go ahead and talk about sharks. And as you can notice, my writing's not the best. Mm -hmm. And you click on it, and we have this crop functionality. So you can actually bring it over, and then click here, and then click shirts. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up our built-in browser, and then it's actually going to go ahead and populate that information automatically and search for it. So now I can go down and say, hmm, let's find a good picture of sharks. I don't know. Pull I went to contract here the wrong button. And it's not hooked up to a computer or anything, this is just a native Yeah, this browser. is bringing all in. So let's say I want that shark picture, and we want to discuss that. So again, crop and paste. I mean crop, you have the capability to just click there, and I can bring all this. And then click, which basically it's taking capture of that image, and now I can actually close out my browser. Yes. And now I have that image from that website, and we can discuss further. And you can actually resize it. So I can go in, put it back here, resize it out. We can make notations on it. We can do different things. We can also embed this into those sheets. So remember how we did the anatomy and we embedded it to the sheet? We have that capability as well. So I could click on this here, and there's this little embed button. And it automatically embeds it in now. So now this is actually part of that sheet, and I can go on to my next sheet and do my lesson plan. Cool thing too is if I'm done with it, Again, just using the palm of your hand to raise without getting any chalk in your hand. So it's kind of a nice feature, right? <laughs> um, we also have what we call the search functionality. So if um, a teacher, they don't like using the digital keyboard, which I don't either, you can actually click on here and click search. And again, it does hand recognition. Um, we'll pick on something called, let's see, I don't know. Does everybody know what an NFT is? <laughs> We go ahead and search on that, and it'll automatically populate. Non fungible token is what that is, by the way. Uh, it's a little humor about that. But yeah, see, so again, brings it up, and then I can go in and then actually select the, select the website. So now we've got a digital whiteboard. We perform, perform basic functionality to be able to go in and make notations, create lesson plans, and things like that. Next piece is how is the teacher going to get their lesson plan out here? Obviously, we can use their native browser, but maybe a lot of teachers like to use their own desktop, app, laptop, MacBook. Um, so we have the import capability. So this is some of the mediums that we can actually import to. So we have mobile devices, so we do support mobile. So I'm not sure how many teachers actually do their lesson plan on mobile, but we do have that capability. Um, from uh, PC, so if I click PC, this is actually wireless. It's just a two-click. This is what we call Miracast. So this is a Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi technology. It's Wi-Fi direct. 
It actually doesn't need to be connected into an internal Wi-Fi network. As long as the device, whether it be a MacBook or a laptop, can see this, it's a matter of hitting on laptop, control K, and it'll bring down the menu and then you can see it. And then you can actually click to connect on it. There's no application that you need to install. But the teacher has to initiate it. So you don't have rogue students connected to your board sending up inappropriate content. You don't want that, that's a no-no. So we have that capability. <laughs> um, so if I click wisely, and he even tells you actually how to connect on that. Um, is anybody connected to this network right here? Uh, it's called WACC. Are you all right? Does anybody want to connect to here for me? Bueller? Bueller? Windows K? No? Any IT guys in here? No, I was like, I don't have PC. No, you don't have a Mac? You want an airplane? Yeah, okay. Well, don't have somebody in a room who's a guinea pig or will you never connect in here. I just want to demonstrate the simplicity of, again, one click on your, two, two clicks on your laptop, two clicks on your Simple way to cast. Uh, we do support AirPlay, so Bueller, um, I've already set this up, so if you can actually look for it in AirPlay. It's there. Okay, go ahead and click on it. It's gonna get, once you do, a code's gonna come up. Uh, might not work. I'm, I can see it though, so I'd imagine it would work. He's technically on a different side of the network than I am. Yes. I assume Samsung WMA series is that. Yeah, it's the WMA. I thought it might be the one out of all the design that it was. It's good out It's probably because I'm not on the same network. Yeah, if you're, you have to, unfortunately, with Airplane, it's, just, it's not a limitation of Samsung, it's a limitation of Airplane. Um, if you, again, if you had a Samsung TZ post 2020, you saw there's this new AirPlay icon in it. We took that technology and we ported it over to this device. The reason that it took us so long to get it on here, it was just due to a licensing issue. Apple is very controlling of their technology and they're not willing to release it out now. But yeah, just for my device, I literally went through, clicked it, um, and then clicked there. And now I have a full functioning app and you can scroll through. So to here, you can actually launch lesson plans, do different things. This is, I think, one of our coolest features is that if you're a teacher and you need to make annotations, you don't want to go into another whiteboard or anything like this. We have a simple one click. It's called our touch overlay. So if you click on it and you actually hear, still hear a sound. I've had students when we do it, they're like, shh, they go with it. But basically what it's done is it's turned this session, so if she was actually casting a lesson plan, into an interactive whiteboard. So now I can go in, make notations, do different things that I need to on my lesson plan while still scrolling through the lesson plan. Scroll through. Just scroll through the website. So as you can see, it's still going on. You can actually save this as too as well. So if you were doing annotations, you can make the same. Yes? So John, do you have to scroll using your laptop? You For Apple, you, unfortunately, yes, because it's only run directional. When you're using Mirrorcast with a Windows-based PC, that's bi-directional. It has something that's called the human interface drivers, and it allows you to uh, work back and forth. So if this was the Windows, I can actually scroll through here and do the same by okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So again, make notations, do different things that you want. Uh, but if you want to minimize this, you can have the capability. Well, I got to turn my touch overlay off. And then I can click here. I can minimize it. I can move it over here as a teacher. And I can say, hey, this is my lesson plan. We're in algebra. Let's go ahead. Oh, I'm going to use the highlighter. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the formulas. E equals MC. There you go. So see again, you have, you know, while you're still having your lesson plan to be able to do various things like that and be able to cancel it out. Uh, let me close this out. I have a question. Yes. Um, with the mobile device, yes. um, if it's an Apple, same thing, you wouldn't be able to control. You'd you can only be one directional, unfortunately. So. Yeah, it's just a limitation of the, the AirPlay software that we've implemented the native airplane. Because you notice I've never asked anyone to load an application on your device. This is all native, so there's no application that you have to have the teachers configure and install. It's just a matter of using how they know how to use it to be able to connect to your My other so. question, with your notations on that, I notice when you scroll, the notation stays, so the notations don't go with the text? It's no, so what stuff. would have to happen at that is, so if I did a bunch of notations, you could click save, and then you can save the notations locally, okay. and you can distribute it back out to the students via a QR code. So if they did have, uh, say, Chromebook, for example, and they were able to scan the QR code, it would then download it to their device. So you do have that way to set up. But all that is saved uh, locally. The reason being is because 
if we try to start trying to pull down, let's say, like a, a Word document or something like that, we don't have the applications running on here. We're doing everything via web-based, and it's just because it's a limitation of processing power. This thing only is 1.6. It has three gigs of uh, DDR4 and 16 gigs of storage. That's not a whole lot. And if you start pushing applications and doing a lot of stuff, you can't align resources, which in turn will make for a bad user experience. For example, if I was to do this, and then three seconds that shows up later. Again, not a good experience for teachers. They'll go ahead and push this out of the way and go back to what they're used to. Is that a question? Is there an application that uh, Samsung has that we can load on the computers to automatically connect to the board? Um, we do have what's called a, and I'm, you're leading me up to my next, <laughs> what I'm gonna show you technology. We have something that's called SmartView Plus, and with that, there's an application called Flip. Um, it is an actually an application you can download to um, your mobile devices, both Apple and Android devices. And what it does is it allows connectivity to this. This is more for students to be able, not teachers, but students to be able to cast information up here. And that's actually he left me to my next segue. I was gonna go into SmartView Plus. So basically, this is the application that allows you to do this. Up to 50 different students can connect. Um, the nice thing about this is it does give teacher the control. So if you have 50 students, they're not all passing information up here at the same time. The teacher actually needs to go through, select that student, and then be able to display now. So we support it's heterogeneous devices. So we're device agnostic. So we'll support any mobile device and we'll support any browser. So we have Chrome, um, IE, Edge, if anybody's still using Edge anymore. <laughs> so far. Um, this does allow Chromebooks. So this will support wireless connectivity for Chromebooks. So it actually does allow connectivity to this. Up to you. Normally I have somebody to help demo this. But yeah, so basically, and it's nice, it does allow you to simultaneously up to four different devices to be shown on the screen. So you can have student A, student B, student C, and student B. And again, remember that one touch, touch overlay I talked about? So if you click there, leaves of that blue screen, now I'm in interactive mode and I can make notations. So if I was working with a student and they had a problem and you were working for them to be able to figure it out, you could actually do that. And then when you're done, it's just a matter of clicking that button, don't say, and now we're back into the usability mode for the uh, Smart Key Plus component of it. Yeah, so we're finished. Don't know if I get so you guys to connect to this, we could all take, but due to time's sake, I won't do that. Um, USB, we do have the capability for USB. Um, IT administrators are gonna wanna lock this down because you don't want a student walking by, sticking a USB drive, and then putting up malicious content. So as the IT administrator, they can lock all these ports down. They can also lock this from a network control, so RMS, so you do have that capability to push this out and lock it from a centralized location. So you don't have to visit each port. Uh, lastly, we have what we have the internet. So this is actually a Chromium browser. This is a full functioning browser that was built into our, our display. Remember when I start Shark and I hit Search, this is the browser that it actually brings up. So it's a full functioning Chromium browser, so it supports majority of those websites that you'll go to. Um, you can scroll through it. That's it. Yes, here it is. I'm sorry. So again, you guys, Schoolology, I believe, is the uh, Campus. Is Campus, okay. Sorry, that's good. So if you do want to access Canvas, you can leverage this browser. We also have the capability of putting in URL redirects. So if I close this out. So for your teachers, let's say that I may not want to type in that long URL each time I'm up. Um, we got this concept of Samsung's workspace. So you could go in here. I've already pre-configured one, but right here you can add all the different uh, types of uh, network drives that you may, I'm sorry, um, websites that you may need to go to. So I use Google Drive. So click on Google Drive, it's gonna log me in, six show up. And then because I already put my credentials in, I'm automatically into Google Drive and be able to see all that information. So if I was a teacher and I needed to access their provision from here, I don't know, we'll just pick on something. We'll go to lesson two, hold it down. And then we have the preview. We also have the capability to open with. Um, you can edit the document, but I don't know how much you want to be doing editing from the board. A lot of times it's easier from your laptop. But at least it does provide that capability to preview. And then launches that document, whatever that lesson plan may be. And then you have the capability to go scroll. And then going back to, I always call it, now I start calling it the magic button. Click on there if I need to do notations, just click on it one time, brings it up, and boom. So we go, I don't know, put a halo on them or something. Get them an R changer. But uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> so, looks like an alien more than anything else. But yeah, again, it's we're just trying to keep it simple. 
for you, for teachers to be able to go. Um, provide a central location, be able to go in and pull content down from there, from different locations. And lastly, sorry, right here. And this, this bar right here, I think on this, this is sort of that toolbar that comes up when you're actually working, you bring your content down. This floats so you can actually move it around. So if you do need to get it out of your way, and you do have the capability to minimize it, so you put it up here for later, so at least it's kind of out of your way. You have a little simple component on that, oh, you're gonna expand it. And then, click it. And then lastly, um, export. So you have content, you created content, and um, you need to send it out to the students. That's export functionality is what we have. Similar to simple, we, we support email. I don't think people use email a lot anymore. Uh, well, and then they do, but not for distribution in classroom. Uh, we do have the capability to print. Um, mobile devices, so this is if you wanted to remember that QR code I talked about. So if I have created content and I need to send it out, I click on the mobile devices. And then be able to, oops, sorry, put the wrong button. Export. To be able to, to do like click export content there, out there. So we can click on mobile devices, send it out. And then screen share, lastly, if you do have other displays in the room, whether they be Samsung displays, you do have the capability to share out content. So for example, if that was a Samsung display, I could actually share the content out there as well. So while I'm working on here, students could be able to see the content as well. And then lastly, one of the things I say before the last is, because you are a Schoolology, we did partner with a company because ours is very basic and we don't yes. have an application. Canvas, I don't know why I keep on saying that, I apologize. Too many customer sites. Um, we partnered with Boxlight. We actually have an application now called Mimeo Connect. Um, Mimeo Connect is basically a web-based application, but it allows access into all the different LMS systems. So whether it be Schoolology or um, Google Classrooms or anything like that, once it loads up, you'll be able to log in. And it does support single sign-on, so the nice thing is that you don't have to man manage an additional credential. Uh, credential. You can actually use your credentials for Schoolology. Or Canvas. Or Canvas. <laughs> 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 we're on a call this morning, that's what we were talking about. But uh, for me, for example, I use Classroom, so I click on there, and then I've already put in my credentials. It'll cache the credentials if you need to, and then I can actually say allow. So this will actually bring it up, and this will actually open up my Google Drive, and it allows you to actually bring in your uh, bring in your classroom material. So because we do support the different um, LMSs out there, you do have that capability to log into it, and it's a pretty intuitive to so it'll start. Um, so for this one, I could just hit uh, we'll go ahead and present, and then we'll just say anonymous normal classroom. It does have a webinar, so we natively do support. Uh, web cameras on this, so Logitech, so if there is a hybrid solution and you want it to be able to have students from home be able to connect, plus also have students in class and have a camera, you have that capability. It's just a matter of plugging it in, just like your computer, it's plug and play, it recognizes it, and then you're good to go. So there's not a lot of configuration that the uh, teachers or the educational uh, need to do. But for this one, just simplicity state, I'll go ahead and click this, hit present. John? Yes. Is Logitech the only camera option? Uh, Logitech is the only camera right now, um, but we are looking at adding additional functionality, some, some of the other. It's just a, basically a, a matter of getting those drivers, similar to like a desktop, loaded into this device. So anybody want to do a class with me? Bueller? If they just have to go to app.mimeoconnect.com and put in this. Okay, we've got some Okay, got some volunteers. <laughs> I have a question about some of the things. Yes. Um, when you were talking about sending content back up to students like 50 at a time, Say you're in middle school and you have a class of 30 students and then your next class comes in, will it wipe and reset? Do yes, you, you have that capability to either do it manually or you can also do it uh, via uh, what we call uh, control remote management. So I have the capability to remotely do that as well. And you can configure this, so this, for example, this may be in a classroom that's moved by, used by multiple teachers. You can configure it to auto erase every 60 minutes or a certain time period, so you have that capability. Good. We've got a bunch of people coming on. All right, look at that. I've got a new class going. <laughs> cool. So yeah, so now basically here's my lesson plan that I can run through. Uh, and you can see on it. Hey, somebody go to a website outside of the classroom for me. Uh-uh. What are you doing, Sawyer? Not paying attention. You better get back in class. So it's kind of nice because when you're doing this lesson plan, 
Um, you can see that your students are paying attention. If they go outside of the uh, Mimeo Connect uh, through the web page, it'll actually notify you to do that. So, and you've got all oh, highlight. Um, there's some different things that you could do. You can actually do some sessions. So you could do chat. You could chat to the whole group, or you could do individual chats. And then you can actually do notes and stuff like that. But again, it's a nice application for your students to be able, for you to be able to pull in Canvas. Yeah. Okay, got it right this time. <laughs> Canvas information into Unless this. Unless it's Schoolology. Yes. That's not here. You're right, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, it's a nice thing. So it's a good place to bring your lesson plan. And again, remember I talked about that magic button. So if we were talking about we need to do a touch earlier. Oh, about oh, that one. Sorry, it's this one. You got it here? So now I've actually got the ability to do notations within. I can make notations in there. So it does have the interactive whiteboard capability function on built into as well. And we'll go ahead and end that class. Thanks to everyone. Everybody got A's? And there's also a polling option too. Yeah. And then we also have a spotlight option as well. So here. here. This is, I know the teachers like this quite a bit. So if you're doing a math, Let's go be able to do that. So you do have that capability to do that as well. So I've got some basic you know, functionality built into it for that from a minute. We'll go ahead and close up. And then there's how many lesson plans that are built in? So this has, Minya Connect has about 10,000 different lesson plans built in. So there's pre canned lessons. So the one that I had, the algebra, I just went into the lessons plan and I was able to pull that down. Um, because we did partner with Boss Life, we actually went out and bought the licenses. So the nice thing is that we're giving you a five-year free license for this. So if you do decide that you want to go with this using this application in addition with our board, you have that capability to do that as well. And again, here's all the different locations you can actually connect to. Oh, one final thing, I forgot, five-year warranty on this for the uh, IT guys, so that's kind of nice. So, and it's an on-site five-year warranty. So we had to do that in education, where a standard display would just be for you. That to be time on this, and I'll go ahead. What's your turnaround time on a warranty call? It depends on which package you've been. So standard, so the standard one within it could be within a couple days once it's identified. Obviously, location plays into that. We do have a white blood service, so we can actually have a day turnaround, and they will actually come into the classroom, take the display off, and then put the new display on there. So we do provide multiple options on that. Does it do multi-touch if you wanted to have two students working apart with the board? Yes. Sure, Michelle. Oh. Yay! <laughs> I'm excited now. We can interact. We support up to 20 different points of touch. And yeah. how do left-handers do with it? Um, so, that's interesting. I'm, I'm a left-hander, and you know, writing on a regular chalkboard, you smear it. Uh -huh. um, with this one, I actually have a better... Oh, sorry, I just pushed yeah. the button. <laughs> but uh, when I'm writing on it, I'm a little bit better because I don't pull my hand because the pen keeps me a little bit way, not like a traditional chalkboard where you smear it. But I can smear it a little bit. So, but yeah, see, as Michelle's working, I'm working. So who's faster? Give me your hand. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what I was writing. <laughs> he, um, he's left-handed, yet he has it on his left hand, right? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, never mind. You talked about homework updates. What's involved in those, and how much, like, when we push out firmware updates to the Mac, sometimes there are problems happen, and teachers get frustrated with that. What would firmware updates So through that RMS, that remote management service I talked about, we have the capability, we create the package for you, um, and you can actually push it out. So it's a real simple process, it goes out of the wire. Ours, I would say, confidently works better than a lot of desktops and other because it's controlled by us, and it's our own little ecosystem, and Tizen is our operating system, to where some of the other ones could be a little bit challenged. But yeah, it's, everyone that I've deployed it at, they love it because we are coming out with firmware updates, unfortunately, every couple of months to add additional feature sets and not having to go to each geographical location, you know, campus to do it, do it from one central location to students. And it's not a heavy package either. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's around the gigs that we're sitting out. And if we wanted to use it for like displays in the hallways on mm -hmm. school night or something, can you load content to it and have it run through it in cycle? Unfortunately, from the content management perspective, because we are limited in resources, we have that remote management, but don't think of it like one of our standalone commercial displays, which has an SOC. We don't have that built in, but you can get past that. We do have what's called an SVB, set-top back box. You can actually connect it, and it's not that big. The cost is very minimal, but it has what we call Magic Info, which is our CMS player, and you can have it pushed to there and then have that connected to here via HDMI, and they have the contents of that one. So I liked uh, a lot of some of the blogging and uh, all that stuff's baked in. My question is, can you lock the whole display down then? 
Uh, yes, you can lock this. Yeah, like a pin code or something. Yes, like yeah, 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 yeah. It brings up a good point. Yeah. So well, I'm just saying it's it's such so handy for it. You should be able to have all this stuff locked in, ready to go. But then if they leave it, and exactly it's come back. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and we're actually taking it a step further. We're looking at introducing profiles to where Sweet. right now it's just by a single board. Mm-hmm. But we're going to be doing profiles to where each teacher will have their own instance, uh-huh. and it'll be just a six-digit code. By the way, whoever does the administration of this, just sort of FYI, to whoever is going to manage it. If you go into the system <laughs> and you go to advanced settings, I put a real tricky passcode for it. Ready? Ready? All zero. So just so you know, everybody knows you'll be able to get it. And this is where you can do all your advanced settings as well. So, like the, the, the knock on and off. Yeah. Can this all be done via an iPad or, or laptop sitting in the back of the room? To cast up today? Yeah, can you write yes. on it? Um, the problem is it's only going to be from, uh, from a MacBook or an iPad. It's only going to be a one directional cast. To do that notation, you have to hit that button to bring up that thread server. So if we wanted to take a teacher off the front of the room, what would they need to use? Um, that's a challenge. So if you need to bring, like, you want them to be doing everything here? Sure, or with an iPad or something. Yeah, they could be doing all that here, but it's just when it comes to actually doing the notations, they have to be up here in front of the board. Okay. Now, I know what you're going to have to be, if I'm making notations up here and I have an iPad in the back of the room to be able to see that, what's going on up here? Well, if I'm standing in the back and I write something on my iPad. Oh, it's going to show up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anything you do on your, your iPad is going to show up here. I'm sorry, I was just talking about notations from here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I connected my MacBook and I was able to connect up here. And then whatever I did on here, what well, Michelle was doing, you could see it up here. Yeah. One of the questions I have actually is about cleaning. Because mm-hmm. uh, after a day of touching that thing, it's going to be gross. Yeah. Um, <laughs> even if it's just me. Yeah. Um, how, being honest, being honest um, what's the, what's the appropriate cleaning and, and I'm thinking over a five year span, to what extent does cleaning over time start to scratch or damage the glass to the extent that it becomes, uh, less than ideal? Right. So cleaning, Typical this because this is not like your consumer or commercial display. This has actually got that hardened layer that I talked about that anti shatter resistant. It's pretty durable, so you can use just water. You can use some basic cleaners like Windex. Because we do this have this over overcoating, it's going to last for five years. If it doesn't, it's under our warranty. And it's something that we'll replace. But don't take. I had I had a guy do this in an education. I don't know why, but he had this and was like, "Oh, is this really?" Hard and he burned it in, and I'm like, well, it's not that hard. But yeah, you know, basic <laughs> stuff on it will be fine. But yeah, just standard cleaners on that. Don't use any abrasive cleaners on it. Even just like a microfiber cloth yeah. is good too. Yeah. Yeah. Away some of the, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some people do some weird things with these. Yeah. <laughs> and then while John was talking, I just pulled up some easy math problems. You know, just pulled up, typed in easy, type, wrote in easy math, searched it, found a couple of images that I liked, made some copies. So this could be interesting for teachers that you know wanted to have their students come up and you know maybe do some easy math problems on the board. And also this cart that we have on it, wait for it, wait for it. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> so K through 12, right? Kindergarten is going to be a lot shorter. So let's bring it down to their level, and then vice versa to be a go up. No, we're not that <laughs> Um, I have a question with that. So, with multiple people writing, you have to have multiple of those pens. Like, if I wanted five kids to come write at once. Yes. Yeah, so unfortunately, you have to have multiple pens or use some other type of object that's kind of yeah, has a hardened tip on it. Stylus. Any kind of stylus. Yes. Yeah. Remember, because there's, there's a there's a skinny point and a fatter point. Mm-hmm. So the skinnier point is the pen, and the fatter point is the highlighter. So. Is there a limit to the number of multi-touch, like how many users? Is there? It goes up to twenty. Yeah. To 20. twenty points. So you're actually get. Normally we say no, they're not four. I think we get twenty kids around. Let's give it a shot. Right. Yeah. 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 So we do work with some third-party manufacturers that do make some hydraulic assisted because these, these they weigh a little bit. This one comes in about 130 pounds because of that additional glass with that interactive. 
But they do make some hydraulic assistance to where the teacher took over down and they lift it back up. So there are some third parties that have that. Tell them they need to make it go 90 degrees too so you can use it as a well. Ah, yeah, I've had that request before. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying tabletop? Tabletop and then pull it up on the screen. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's real easy. You know, I encourage you. I mean, get the tone breaks. Just come up here, pick up some styles, just start working on it. Play with it. See how simple and intuitive it is to use. Yeah, that's definitely the goal. Can I ask yeah. about the sound quality? So if you were um, displaying, you know, say a music teacher is. Let's go to YouTube. Yeah, you all hear it? Yeah, yeah. Let's give it a run. Do it, do it, do it. Yeah, I could have just wrote this around. <laughs> and then it went that way. Uh, one of my favorites, let's see here. You guys know what story bots are? You ever heard that? I like this one. Yeah, I'll just mention it. Again, I could have just wrote it. There you go. One of these has like 10 million views. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. There you go. Oops, I got my sound down now. Look at me. Here I am. Because we have 10 watt speakers, they point down. I mean, obviously they're not we can the see best speakers, but at least in the classroom, that's why people are good with it. I think we can hear it from here so, too. Go. And then, wow, this is great. I can see that picture on the first one. The song track from the first one is tracked from the beginning. I'm the center of the solar system. Planets be spinning around me. So hot, I'm lost in your seat. Now I'll pass the mic with the planet closest to me. Mercury, the smallest planet, smallest Earth's moon. I can do a hot and cold energy. Alright, I'll show you two more story boxes. Do you have any graphing tools on yet? I'm sorry? Do you have any graphing tools on yet? We have some basic ones that we have. So we have some basic rulers, some other things like that. So if I go to here, let me close this up. Yeah, you can, make, you can actually draw a straight line using that, uh, that ruler. So I click here on the ruler, I can open up. We have uh, that one, we have a ruler, a triangle. And then the ruler, you can just draw the straight yeah, line. Yeah, exactly. You can use it and then draw a straight line on We're adding more. So again, as John kind of pointed out, like, we listen to the voice of the customer and we've come, um, we've really come a long way and just even the past year on addressing uh, educational issues and, and things that are very specific to education versus what you would find in a corporation. So uh, we really value that input. And again, as John said, as we make those changes, those are free upgrades to you guys. There are no, no costs. It's just hardware and firmware, so, I mean, software and firmware. Can you attach external speakers? Uh, yes, you can. There's a 3.5 millimeter back out here. And we're, if you happen to have a Samsung Bluetooth speaker and the next firmware, we will support that automatically as well. So you can build connect bars. Because it's Samsung, Samsung. Obviously, that's going to work. We're going to mud our things. <laughs> And it does support uh, Bluetooth peripherals, so you, if you do have a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse, you can connect those. So if the teacher wants to work from their desk or teacher's desk or something. I have another question. Um, you said that there were 16 gigs of storage, and if you're like saving all of your notations, is that going towards that 16 gigs? Yes, it does, but we save these in what's called an IWB format. So it's a really uh, slimmed down uh, file format, and we save stuff as PNGs, unlike JPEGs, which are a lot more heavier. So our file size, we really, we're good stewards about how we do things on them. So I've had teachers, and you could you could save up to 20 sheets per roll. I've had teachers with 200 rolls on here and not run out of space. When you export it, though, it does convert it to a PDF. Okay. And then is it easy to delete it or clear it? Like I'm thinking like new classroom, new teacher. Yep, so you, you can set it automatically to delete, or you can go into that role browser, which think of it like a, a, an explorer, if you will, like your Windows desktop, and then they can all be in here, and you can go in and delete them as well. So, thank you, thank you. Well, I thank you for your. Oh, wait, 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 one more. 
Yeah. 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 How does it integrate with a, like a dot cam? Uh, so which one are you talking about? The L one? Well, like a yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, right now, to integrate with that, we're not supporting them natively, so you have to use sort of a book or something that you connect it into. Right. But we are looking at integrating that support natively into here. So we've done it with the web Logitech cams, and it's just a matter of getting those drivers ported in here. Right. Does that have inputs on it? Yeah, 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 sorry, back in the back here, you have some HDMI and USB inputs as well. Yeah, and you do have, H you have an HDMI and USB uh, input here. Okay. This is some for hardware, if you want a hardware. Gotcha, so you, and it's a, it's a separate input, so you could have something on a different channel. Yeah, exactly, exactly, up. exactly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jay? Yeah. So there are some document cameras that are just basic yeah. UVC, yeah. just no drivers required, just plug in. That should work on here, yeah. I have then, one, can I plug that in real quick? I have an sure. Elmo, a new Elmo that does that. Just. Uh, Curiosity Thank you.